Welcome to our 2019 uh, spring planted cover crop uh, tour. Uh, we think that our plots look as good as they ever have, so we wanted to record this uh, and share it with people for years to come. Uh, my name is Keith Burns, a uh, salesman here with Green Cover Seed, and with me is Dale Strickler, another one of our sales agronomists with Green Cover Seed. We're just going to take a little bit of time and take you through our spring planted plots. Uh, Dale, I believe these were planted April 9th, uh, and as everybody knows, it's been a very wet spring here in 2019, so the plots look great. There's been no irrigation, no, no, no irrigation no needed, irrigation. Uh, but a tremendous amount of growth in spite of the fact that we've had kind of a cooler and cloudier than normal spring, uh, so I think it's pretty impressive how things look. What's, what's your initial assessment? Things look great. Uh, they've really developed well, so I'm glad we had this opportunity to to capture a good looking plot on film. Yeah, so we're going to start out with the brassicas and then we'll move on to other plants, but uh, I'm sitting here uh, in the midst of our radishes and we've got three different types of radishes here that we'll talk a little bit about. We've got the uh, the nitro radish and the smart radish which are both daikon type radishes and then we've got the control radish which is over here. Uh, it's got more of the purple type blossom and it's an oilseed radish uh, its primary use is in nematode control because it's got better nematidal uh, properties. So as you can see with all of the blossoms, uh, this is why you wouldn't plant radishes in the spring if you're really looking to go after that big taproot that the radishes are famous for because you're not going to get that big root growth because radishes uh, go reproductive uh, in, in sensing day length and when the days are getting longer like they are in the spring, uh, radishes are going to bolt and they're going to flower uh, and they're in the process of setting seed pods right now. Uh, when you plant them when the days are getting shorter, that's when you get that uh, big root development. Uh, so you wouldn't necessarily plant them if you really want to break up compaction and do some of those things, but there are really good uses for radishes in the spring. And Dale, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Uh, I think an overlooked use of radishes is as pollinator habitat. I mean, look at this display of flowers and and uh, the control radish over there is particularly pretty. Um, this is very attractive. If the wind weren't blowing like this, this would be coated in butterflies and bees right now. Um, I think this has some real potential to put into pollinator mixes. Mm -hmm. it, it blooms very quickly. Um, and if you leave it over the summer, it'll produce seed and, and produce a crop of those big radishes with the well-developed root systems that we're used to seeing from uh, August or late summer planting. For, for possibly from the volunteer, you're saying. Right, yeah, we yeah. can get a volunteer crop of radishes this way. Yeah. So, so again, uh, use these wisely. Uh, there's one other type of radish that we usually have, but for some reason when we planted these plots we were out of stock, and that's the Graza uh, fodder radish. Uh, it does not bolt nearly as quickly, so if you're looking for a radish to graze and have maximum amount of forage in the spring, uh, the Graza radish is the better choice. Uh, we just unfortunately ran out of seed when we planted our plots and don't have that to show here yeah, today. Uh, of all the brassicas, Graza is, is in the top echelon of heat tolerance. I mean, it always seems to show well in a summer or spring planted plot. Uh, prob probably is a good looking plant among the brassicas of any we have for summer growth. Okay, and that's uh, that's the radishes.